Hey folks, hopefully the wind cooperates with me here. I wanted to make a quick video talking about raising a wall safely in high wind, but obviously for you to hear me, I had to wait for the wind to die down. So we're having a fairly calm uh, evening out here in the mountain range, but that is not always going to be the case. And if you're like me and you're on a job site and you're not in the backwoods of Virginia or Tennessee, and you've got a lot of wind coming around your property because you have an exposed space like this, and you're about to raise a wall using wall jacks, you might have some concerns. And rightly so. It's funny, the main company that sells these, Guardian Fall Protection, um, doesn't include fall protection in the kit. So when you buy these, uh, you're going to end up having to figure that out for yourself. Now, a couple of risks. As you're lifting these walls, if you get a little carried away and you're lifting solo, which a lot of people get these jacks to do, as I've done, uh, bear in mind, you know, you're talking about a very heavy wall. You got, a th I have three and a half sheets of OSB on this wall. It's not fully sheathed. Um, and depending on your thickness of OSB, you're talking anywhere from what, 60 to 90 pounds. Um, plus you got the weight of your lumber. I got a two by six framed wall, some headers, some miscellaneous bits going on. So this is a heavy wall. You know, you figure a, a common wall, you could be lifting 300 to 600 pounds. Now the jacks are easily up for that, but what they don't really cover is slipping and falling and wind. So here are the three things that can go wrong. First of all, these jacks, I don't know if you can see it, they've got two little legs that go under the wall and you're supposed to get them on either side of a stud. But on this side, it's just kind of a smooth pin that goes underneath there. There's really nothing that happens uh, that holds itself to the wall. There's no way to attach the jack to the wall. It's really just gravity holding it there. What's wrong with that? Well, the wall's heavy, right? Well, what happens if you get a little carried away with one jack or the other? Usually you're going to want two jacks to do this to spread the load so you're not twisting your wall. If you lift all the way from the middle, you got a thousand pounds, you have 500 pounds of wall hanging on either side here. And what that's going to do is it's going to twist your wall as you go up, and that's not good. So what you do is you put two of these in here. You start lifting. You get a little carried away with that one. Now this one is actually up in the air. Your wall's not gonna twist that much. The moment this comes off the jack, the jack falls down. There's nothing that holds it from falling sideways this direction. So you can see the first safety thing that I came up with here is uh, putting a pair of blocks on both sides. You have to make sure you allow a little bit of room for these bolts uh, on either side here. Make sure you don't put it right against the jack, but that will stop the jack from falling sideways left to right. Let me tell you, I had one fall and hit me in the arm. Didn't really hurt me badly. I didn't break my arm, but it could have. Like if I had been in the wrong spot at the wrong time, I think I caught it about midway up. So, you know, leverage, I was catching it a little on the better side. If I had caught it out on the end of a 14 footer or God forbid a 20 footer, if you're lifting a bigger wall, it could probably fracture or break your arm. So you got to really think about that. These things do want to fall over left or right. So that's the first thing. Now, you'll notice I didn't drive my screws in all the way. That's okay. They're not really carrying any load. They're just there to provide a few pounds of resistance either direction. So I'm using these to raise every wall in the house that I'm building here. Uh, and I'm just not driving the screws all the way in because it's just not necessary. I don't want to crack uh, one of the pieces that I've got here. I want to use them for the whole project. Now, the second thing that I've done is to keep the bottom end from kicking out. Now they tell you to put one stud behind it, but of course, if this thing twists and wants to go this way and the base kicks out left or right, it could come right off that. You can't screw it onto it because it has to pivot. That needs to hinge over. And unless you actually want to put a hinge on the floor, which I will tell you, I thought about doing that might be a good safety option, would be something like, a, you know, a big stout beefy hinge something along these lines running underneath and attached to it. If you had something like that, I did not, uh, that might be a really good safety item to put on the bottom there. Uh, what I did instead was I created these two. I just put one left and right. What's actually really nice about this is it makes sort of a channel. So once the wall is up, you want to level the wall. How do you level the wall? As you level the wall, you pull the wall off the jack or towards the jack. But no, because that jack only runs one direction. There's really no good way to reverse it, especially not getting up in the air and trying to monkey with it at, at the height. They do have these really, really stiff spring lever arms that if you wanted to back it off, you could. But I'll tell you, it's incredibly difficult to do. Like, you, you really need to put a pipe on them. And the instructions don't really tell you how to do that. But what you do is you can take a, a section of your iron pipe and put it over this nub here. And you have to go back and forth and work one, work the other, and 
Sometimes it goes forward anyway. It's just a real pain. If you're an eighth bubble out and you're trying to fine tune it, it is not easy to do. So what I recommend doing is get your wall very, very close, but not all the way up to level, just short of level. And the idea there is that with these channels now, you can come in here and drive a wedge in there or just use a bar right in that slot and push that foot forward. Or if you've overshot it a little bit and need to come back, just undo these two screws and very carefully slide this back eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch at a time. So it's a really nice way to level your wall once it's up here um, without having the thing um, you know go away from you. Now, the other problem, though, is that these jacks push. They only push. They don't pull. There is nothing on this side to stop that wall from falling over. Now, if you're working later in your building and you're coming up and meeting a wall like this, as I'm about to, I'm going to catch this wall here, and this wall is going to stop me from falling over. So I'm not too worried now. But the very first wall that I put up here, that was not happening. That first wall wanted to fall over, and we just about lost it. And that's the thing that I mean. When you're in high wind, they don't tell you some of these things in the instructions for the, for the jack. I mean, these instructions look like they were mimeographed in the 1980s, I got to tell you. You got to find them on YouTube or on um, either a, a video on YouTube or um, you know the PDF uh, if you're buying these on Amazon. And it is not easy to read. Like it is very, very nonspecific. They sort of figure you're going to figure this out on your own. Um, so the problem is there's nothing there to catch the wall on the other end. Now, I could have worked out some type of hook, something along those lines. They sell a, a wind accessory kit that's supposed to help a little bit. I'm not sure how much that's going to do because, you know, this base is not pinned down in any way. Remember, it has to hinge. So the whole thing could pull that way and just walk itself off. So what I came up with was some hooks. And it seems fairly obvious, but let me talk through a couple of details. So I'm building in a backcountry site. This is a homestead. There isn't a hardware store for 45 minutes and the nearest Home Depot or Lowe's is about an hour 15, okay? So when you're coming up with stuff, you kind of have to jury rig a little bit. And I'll show you a few things that failed. First of all, not that I would say I wanted to use these hooks, but I had them in the shed, so I figured I might as well at least try. I was in an emergency situation. Remember, I figured all this out after I got that wall in the air. So this was kind of jerry-rigging and, and doing stuff in a rush while there was wind blowing around me. This hook is too thin. That's about, I don't know, a quarter inch. Too, too thin. Uh, about, I think this was, uh, yeah, seven sixteenths. Okay, seven sixteenths. This is strong enough. A good lag eye, anything along these lines, you drive them to the top of your wall, that does a remarkable job. And it, this is easily strong enough. In a pinch, if you have to, one of these hooks will work if it's very, very short and you hook your uh, your chain to the very bottom of it here. So this didn't bend on me, but it is pretty sketchy. So I don't recommend those kinds of hooks. What worked really, really well for me is these. Now, I don't actually know what these are for. I think they're tie downs. I found them in the trailer section in Harbor Freight, but I know Ace Hardware sells them as well. Um, if you have a Harbor Freight store nearby or any Home Depot or any other hardware store, that'll do. Uh, they're sold to create tie downs in the beds of vehicles. Uh, and because they're designed to be tie downs, they're very strong. They're welded. Uh, so there's a welded ring here. There's no, you'll notice if I spin this around, there's no gap in it. That's important. Um, and, um, you, you can put four screws down in here. Now I would recommend coming into a joist if you can. I don't have to do that because I've got two layers of subfloor down. So I have a heck of a thick subfloor here and I've got some, um, GRK screws, uh, coming down in here, but I would recommend something like, you know, your typical, your three inch GRK, there's a three and an eighth number nine GRK. Uh, it's a structural screw Four of those down into a joist is going to do you proud. Um, and this ring here makes it really easy to hook something over. Just double check, make sure it doesn't pop off. I would recommend a very beefy strap. Honestly, with the leverage that you've got at the top of the wall by the time you get it up there, it probably is only holding 20 or 30 pounds. But if you get a freak wind blast and you do have sheathing on your wall, it's going to grab it. That's a big sail area. And I think that the cranks on these are much better. Those small one-inch straps are just not designed to be pulling something. They're designed to hold something and to provide just enough tension to hold something down. These things you can actually pull with, and they're very, very strong. I think they're rated for, 
I don't know, three, 400 pounds a piece. I don't remember when I bought this, but two inch webbing, very beefy strap on it. And um, it's 25 foot long. So I've got plenty of room here. You can see I've come back about three feet. I haven't attached this one yet. I will. Um, and then the last innovation that I came up with, and I'm pretty proud of this, is everybody in every YouTube video is putting sawhorses back behind their wall as they lift it. Because what happens is, this is low to the ground right now. It's below my knees. By the time this wall is up in the air, that thing is going to be 10 feet high. Because remember, it's a lever. It's a four-foot bar on top of an eight-foot wall way up in the air. So, you know, you're talking 12 feet up in the air at the angle that you're going here. You can't reach the thing. So people are putting saw horses down to try to catch it. They're getting up on a ladder. Now you're in the fall zone to be able to reach this bar. And I definitely don't recommend that. Look, let's be honest with ourselves. That saw horse is not going to catch an 800 pound wall. What's going to happen is the wall is going to come down it's going to hit your ladder and you're going to go flying if you don't get crushed. So it's a very dangerous place to be behind this wall while you're raising it. And what I found is that if you take a 22 and a half or even a 45 elbow, all of these uh, four foot bars, most people use black pipe for this. You can use steel bar. This is for bending conduit. They're, they're basically all the same. Any three quarter, one inch bar, whatever the jack you buy. The jack I bought is, is not the original one. I, I think it's a generic and it only takes three quarter. Uh, I think the Guardian Fall one takes three quarter or inch. I think they've got it drilled out for both. But um, in any event, when you get this set up, by the time you get that about halfway up in the air, you put this bar in there and it lowers it down so you can lift the wall almost completely vertical without even getting on a ladder. And then once you do, you just need a little step stool and uh, you're not in the fall zone. So you're behind where the wall would come down if something was to go wrong. You get, you know, some sudden derecho storm blowing through something like that you don't want that to be you standing behind the wall so in any event get yourself an extra bar get yourself an elbow this is a 22 and a half um i'm pretty happy with that i think if i did it again i might get a 45 i think if i had a 45 i might be able to get the wall just about vertical without even getting on a ladder so that would be really nice uh, but, you know, I'm getting up on the ladder to fasten the top as I level the wall anyway. So uh, it's not that big of a deal. So in any case, I would video myself raising this wall. Um, but I'm here alone on the site. I don't have a tripod and I don't really have a safe way to do that. So I really want to focus on what I'm about to do. But thank you for watching. Hopefully some of these tips help you. And uh, yeah, good luck raising your own walls.